Okay, welcome back. This is Acid Base 3, where we're going to talk about the anion gap uh, and the delta delta. Two important concepts that uh, you will be asked about all the time on the medicine floors, and you should be able to answer them intelligently. So, the anion gap you probably know, it's probably mentioned in uh, another one of my videos here, uh, but it's simply a way of measuring uh, extra ions in the blood, particularly uh, when you have a metabolic acidosis. So to get the anion gap, you just take total sodium concentration and subtract out the sum of the bicarb and the chloride concentrations. And a normal anion gap is about 10 to 14. So what does this mean? This means that normally, when you use this equation, there are some extra negatively charged things that you're not measuring in the blood things like albumin, other proteins, etc. Now it's important because you can get a metabolic acidosis, okay, meaning there are more protons positively charged, when you introduce a negatively charged uh, acid. Okay, because it comes in basically with its proton, that's one way of thinking of it, and uh, it adds to over here. So normally this is 10 to 14 in the blood. Uh, let's say I take you and I, I infuse a bunch of lactic acid, uh, the lactate, uh, would come over here, negatively charged, and the anion gap would go up to something like 18, 20, 25. So, in your blood, of course, you have the, the ability to buffer acids, right? And you've all seen this equation here before. You have bicarb joining with a proton to form carbonic acid, uh, which can then make water and CO2 that you can blow off. And of course, this is the whole basis of being able to buffer your blood by breathing faster and blowing off uh, CO2 or making your blood more acidemic by slowing down your breathing and retaining CO2 and thus driving the reaction this way and getting more protons. So the example I just gave is if I were to take you and infuse you with lactic acid, LAH, you would get a lactate uh, that would then contribute to this unknown part uh, of the anion gap, or things you're not measuring, and the proton would then come here and make your bicarb basic, basically get lower, okay? Because the proton is going to combine with bicarb to go back this way. And thus, when you have a metabolic acidosis, your bicarb concentration, as you know, goes down. Now, this should have all been a little bit of review for you, okay? Perhaps the only new thing is talking about uh, what the anion gap actually means, okay? Now, if you have a metabolic acidosis and you want to be sure there's nothing else going on, you are going to calculate what we call a delta-delta, shown here. A delta-delta is calculating the delta anion gap divided by the delta bicarb. And so what do we mean by delta? All we mean is change from the normal value. Okay, so think of uh, anion gap as being a normal value of 10 to 14. Some say 8 to 12, 8 to 14, 8 to 15. Uh, I like to think of it as just 10. Anion gap of 10 is pretty normal. Delta bicarb, well, normal bicarb is about 24. Again, you might see 22 to 26, 22 to 25. Think of it as 24, okay? Now, the delta just means that you're taking your anion gap and figuring out the difference between your anion gap and the normal anion gap. I just told you normal was 10, okay? So if your anion gap is 25, then your delta anion gap is 15. Same for bicarb, okay? Just told you normal is 24. If yours is 14, then your delta bicarb is 10, okay? When you calculate the delta delta, if it's less than one, that means that there is a gap and a non-gap acidosis, okay? So a gap acidosis refers to the fact that there's a bigger anion gap and that's the cause for the acidosis. A non-gap acidosis simply means your anion gap is 10, it's what it's supposed to be, but you still have an acidosis, okay? So in non-gap acidosis, there is no extra ion floating around, okay? Extra ions would be like lactic acid, ketones, aspirin. There's lots of things that can do it. 
Okay. If it's equal to 1, the delta delta, then you have a pure gap acidosis. And this should make sense to you. Because what we're saying when this equals 1 is that for every change in bicarb shown here, you're also getting a change in the anion gap shown here. The example is I infuse you with lactic acid. For every proton that comes over here, you're getting a lactate that then contributes to the anion gap. So for every lowering of the bicarb, you're getting an increase in the anion gap. And that should make sense to you. Now for less than one, when I said you have a gap acidosis and another reason for acidosis, what's happening is it's less than one. So you're getting a change in anion gap, but then your change in bicarb is bigger than the change in anion gap. That means that you have an ion contributing to the change in bicarb, and then you have something else contributing to the change in bicarb. Okay? And so the example would be you have diarrhea and you, you're getting rid of a lot of bicarb that way. You now have two different things contributing to this decrease in bicarb. And so if it's less than one, you have a gap and a non-gap uh, acidosis. And finally, if it's greater than one, as you can probably guess, you have a gap acidosis and a metabolic alkalosis. Now maybe you couldn't have guessed that because this takes a little bit of uh, kind of playing with it to get it. If it's greater than one, that means you have a change in your anion gap that is much greater than your change in bicarb. Okay, now how would that make any sense? The only way that would make sense is if you had something driving your bicarb down, okay, the gap acidosis, and then you had something else driving the bicarb back up, okay? And a good example would be a metabolic alkalosis. Remember, osis refers to the process. So you can have a metabolic acidosis with a metabolic alkalosis at the same time. Okay, a little confusing, but think about that again. Okay, if it's equal to one, you have a gap acidosis. That means every time you have a change in anion gap, it's reflected in the change in bicarb. Okay, so again, to review, anion gap goes up 10, bicarb goes down 10. Gap acidosis, end of story. Okay, less than one. That means that you have these big changes in bicarb and smaller changes in anion gap. Okay, that means you have more than one thing that's causing the bicarb to go down. Gap acidosis, and a non-gap acidosis, like maybe diarrhea. Finally, if it's greater than one, then you have a gap acidosis and a metabolic alkalosis. In other words, if it's greater than one, you have this big anion gap, and your bicarb, bicarb change is very small. Okay, and so you have something driving your bicarb down, and then something else driving it up, so it looks like it's at, at a fairly reasonable level. So, delta delta greater than one, you have a gap acidosis and a metabolic alkalosis. Quick examples of that uh, shown over here. In fact, this is what I just told you. pH of 7.35, uh, anion gap of 20, bicarb of 19. So, uh, <clears throat> you see this lower bicarb, you're immediately thinking that you have a metabolic acidosis and you're correct. Uh, you look up and you see the anion gap is 20 and you go, that makes sense, I have a gap acidosis. But you might be asked on the floor, is that all you have? And the way you answer that is you say, well, let me look at my delta delta. The change in my anion gap, okay, so that's what you have, and how that's different from the normal is 10. I said a normal anion gap is 10, you have 20, so the delta anion gap is 10. Then the delta bicarb, if normal bicarb is 24, the delta bicarb is 5, because so we have a bicarb 19. Your delta delta is now 2, and that tells me, remember greater than one, that I have a gap acidosis and a metabolic alkalosis. And if you think it's all just kind of uh, uh, cerebral gymnastics, it's not, because you actually get diabetic patients that go into a diabetic ketoacidosis, which is metabolic acidosis, uh, and then if they were to get sick and start throwing up, uh, that would actually be a metabolic uh, alkalosis as they were throwing up uh, acid. Essentially, their blood would get a little more uh, alkalotic. So that's your example. Last point before leaving is, remember when you're looking at anion gaps, I said normal is about 10, but because uh, albumin uh, contributes a great deal to this unknown factor we're actually measuring with the anion gap, if albumin levels uh, are down,
then the anion gap is uh, uh, artificially down. So this actually should say, I wrote, this should actually say albumin here. Let me correct that. So for every one, the albumin is decreased from normal. Anion gap will be artificially decreased 2.5. So if you have an albumin level uh, that's <clears throat> uh, down by 2, then your normal anion gap, instead of being 10, will now be 5. Okay? Uh, so that's it for today. That's anion gap and delta-delta. Again, these are things that you'll be expected to know on the medicine floors, uh, and it'll help you uh, a great deal in taking care of your patients. Until next time.